Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of our lockdown interview series. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Charlie Tanfield, a GB track star who is only 23 years old. However, he's already made a splash in the world of cycling. Charlie has already claimed gold in the individual pursuit at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. He was also part of the underdog story of Team KGF. Thereafter, he went on to be part of the GB Team Pursuit Squad who won the World Championships. And he even made headlines in 2018 at the Innsbruck World Championships. So without further ado, here is the interview. You. Enjoy. Hi Charlie, how are you doing? Hi, uh, how how's your training going right now with the lockdown? And where are you at the moment? Yeah, so uh, I moved back home with my parents as soon as the lockdown happened. Um, and I've been here now for since yeah, probably getting on four weeks now. But training's going well. I'm in a good routine, so yeah, just uh, day in, day out, getting it done. Uh, with the chance of viewers at the end of the season. So, Charlie, what were your ambitions in 2020? Uh, yeah, so we were all building up for the uh, Olympics uh, at the end of the year, which obviously hasn't come together, but we've got 2021, so that's going to be the main goal for us for now. Yeah, it was all set It was all set towards the Olympics, and um, we spent two and a half years building up for that date, and, um, yeah, it's kind of been put on the um, put foot forward a bit more, which isn't a bad thing in, in all honesty. Do you kind of have to refocus and think... Uh, now we have to change everything or was it like oh we can improve even more or were you like nearing your peak i don't think we were near our peak uh whatsoever um in all honesty we were quite far behind at worlds which i'm pretty you'll have seen the danes were absolutely flying and um we've got another 16 oh well 15 months now so to improve and what we were like at worlds i didn't feel as though we were the top of our game and um it gives us another chance really to fully reset and build again ready for 2021 so i think it's a positive thing so in terms of just taking a back a step how did you get involved with cycling in the first place well uh yeah i started with my brother my older brother harry um he rides for ag2r and we started um we started on the local mountain bike tracks, um, racing there with my, uh, with my brother. And um, we met this local club rider um, on the way back home once. And he asked us to come down to this local race league um, at the local track where um, it was like for 10-year-olds or something. And uh, we all, we all uh, we went down there one day and found we were, we were actually all right at it. And it was a good laugh. So we just kept on going and uh, kind of just grew from there, really. Uh, we just got into it, I guess, and uh, got a bit obsessed by it and caught the bug. How did you get into track cycling? Um, I think it was just a, a development on the road cycling. We did the National Youth Series when we were youth riders, um, and it was a kind of a case of, like, the good guys get on the GV squad, and um, we we had to do track to get on the GV squad at the time. So we just started doing that to go alongside the road and, and then sort of got into it from there, which, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how we got into it. But then I, I stopped, I stopped, I stopped as soon as I was a, a junior. I didn't ride the track for like three years and then started again. Being a track rider, do you incorporate road cycling into I your do. training? Yeah, a lot. Well, now it's all track and gym. Uh, Cause obviously we don't have any facilities, but um, I'd say the normal split is, Probably for us, um, ma the majority is road, and then we do quite a lot of gym and quite a lot of track as well. So it's, uh, I'd probably say about 60% road, 30% gym, 30% track. Because you still ride for Canyon Iceberg? Yeah, Canyon? yeah, yeah. Um, Canyon DHB Soaring, I think it's called now, um, which I haven't, I haven't had a chance to race in this year. Um, Tim's been kind enough to keep my spot open for the year. Um, even though I'm not going to be racing. Um, so, yeah, my, I, I do have ambitions to, to do some road racing as well later on um, after after Tokyo. So I look forward to trying to do that with the team. So going back to 2017, which was kind of one of your breakthrough, well, one one of the years where you first made a name for yourself. What was it like going to nationals that year and actually being the underdog yeah. on the pursuit team? It was, uh, it was very surreal, to be honest, because... Uh, yeah, at the time we were just like, we didn't really know how far we could we could take it, sort of thing. Like looking back now, you think it's nationals, but compared to like racing the world champs or you know the comic games or even going to the Olympics. But at the time, the nationals for us was absolutely huge, and 
that could have been the ceiling of what we could achieved. Um, so for us, it was everything on nationals and um, we surprised ourselves with winning and beating the GB lads, which was a, which was a great feeling. And uh, it yeah, just took off from there, really. What was the background of this team uh, KGF? What, how did you get yeah. together? So um, me and Dan, uh, Dan Bigham, um, we first met um it was on a training camp at um it was in calpe it must have been 20 a long time ago but anyway i had interest of going back on the track and dan also had interest of going back on the track and um we both sort of got along really well because um he was uh he was he studied engineering at uni and i was studying engineering too and um we both decided that we'd try and get together a team pursuit squad um and dan had a friend johnny whale and i was asking jacob tipper to come and uh, to try and join us to do the team pursuit and um we started training and we did like four sessions together and um <laughs> turned up at nationals and managed to win which was good and then you shocked the world as well the following year where you took a world cup victory yeah yeah and we sort of snowballed from there and um gained momentum and we sort of dipped our feet in the water uh to say at nationals and then the next year we were just fully committed i moved from um from my house here in great eight into uh derby um so we could be based as a team and live together and yeah we were we were fully committed and gave everything to um to go to the world cups and just to compete really we didn't even think we would win any of the world cups we just wanted to go there and and you know race other nations and like you know i remember seeing like the italian team was team pursuit squad and just being like an awe just like oh these boys are so good and then <laughs> and then later on we were like racing against them and you know going up against them which is great in terms of your individual ambitions on the track you've also been doing a lot of individual pursuits and in 2017 you were second in the national champs was that something you were expecting uh, yeah i i think <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The, the times before, you can a team pursuit, uh, an individual pursuit. You sort of know what people are going to do and stuff going into it, and you know from your training what you can do. So, for me, it was about trying to beat Dan. Um, I think we had the measure of the uh, BC lads in the um, in the individual pursuit. So I was just trying to beat Dan really, but he put me away in 2017. <laughs> but 2018, I managed to progress even more and uh, take it further than I ever thought I would do. So, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was a nice experience. There was a lot of buzz around you as you got the second quickest British pursuit time. I think it was the second... At the time, I think it was... I think the world record was Bob Ridge, and then it was um, then it was Bodman, who was the second fastest, I think, at the time, and then and then it was me. So, um, yeah, that was a... It kind of, I think it kind of reinvigorated the individual pursuit because not many people were really... They were losing interest in the event. It wasn't an Olympic event anymore and um, people were moving on to other events. So it was good to see a lot more interest in the event and um, I guess along with that come interest in um, what I was doing as well, which is another bonus. It's one of those events where I think it's for the uh, pure cyclists. So I, I'm not sure what the uh, the general public think about it, but um, I love to get into it. And, you know, you see the splits and like you see people's, you can get a bit, bit geeky about it, you know, and see everyone's positions and stuff. And uh, you can see what uh, you can see what people have done to like improve and stuff. And I just love it. It's uh, it's it's cycling in its purest form. And the current world record is held by Filippo Ghana. Yeah. Which is an insane time. Oh, it's Only, mad. So he shaved six seconds off yeah. the previous one, which in track cycling, seconds mean a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he's he's done so well there. It's, what's the time now? Is it, is it a 401, is it? 401, oh, the world record? Yeah. It's it's so fast and uh, he's done so well there. There's also people that are getting quite close as well um, in the first rides. So like Ashton Lambie, he got close at Worlds. So it shows that like you know it's it's moved on so much. And since I was last doing it when it was a 411 pace, it's like a different world now, similar to the Team Pursuit really. Yeah, it's all moving on so fast. What's the massive jump that's happened? Is it equipment? Is it changing of the rules? Is it 
training uh, is it yeah i think uh people are thinking about it um more in a sort of scientific way not just uh sort of well the people before us did it this way so we'll just do it this way as well you know like sort of fresh thinking and yeah technology's moved on a lot there's a lot more people in the know now in the sport and um yeah it's it's a new age of cycling really it's uh yeah it's moved on so much so in 2018 you also went to your first commonwealth games how was the whole experience you actually won the individual pursuit so you are actually the commonwealth champion right now that was great yeah yeah it's it absolutely mega the whole the whole thing with it being in australia you know and uh yeah i have really good memories of uh of that event um the team pursuit we got silver and then in the individual i managed to get the gold and it was good to share the experience with my friends you know i had most of my teammates there from kgf as well so like to be there with my mates and uh, my brother was uh yeah it's all just really good memories and um it was good to do a really fast time as well speaking about road you also managed to win the under 23 national time trial championships yeah um that was another goal of mine i, I mean i wanted to win the under 23 nationals because i knew that would get me a ticket to worlds i kind of just focused on that to try and get the, the jersey there and um that come together it was on a local circuit i kind of had aspirations of doing a bit more road than what i did i didn't quite realize what gv would be like um the track program in terms of what what i would like to do and like how how i could balance things um so i've had to put it a bit on hold really the, the road side of things but i hope to return to it soon so speaking about the world championships in innsbruck you made headlines again but for different reasons this time yeah not for the right reasons <laughs> Yeah, that was, um, yeah, it's uh, one of the lowest points in my uh, cycling career so far. Um, yeah, you learn. It's one of those experiences where you learn from it and you just you just hope and just plan ahead that you're never going to do that again because you can't let that happen. Yeah, I, I laugh about it now, but at the time I was absolutely devastated because it was my last year under 23 and I, I really did want to do well and um, I wanted to try and get up there and do, get a good result. Um, but yeah, it did was... You, did you like the course in Innsbruck? Um, I mean, it, to be honest, I don't think it was a course fully suited to me. It was, It had quite a few climbs in, but I still thought I could have done well there. But in all honesty, the whole preparation around that event and the weeks leading up to it, it didn't go my way. Training was... Training was a bit up and down, and I arrived there, and my bags didn't arrive, my bike didn't arrive, um, and I, I only got one chance to look around the course, so I was kind of on the back foot already, and then the cherry on the cake was <laughs> being starting the start, start tent and uh, being asked to go up to the race, and uh, yeah, just, yeah, completely missing out on it all. Any publicity is good publicity. That's what I heard from it, yeah, that's, that's, that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> that's the only good thing I think of. So when did you join the GB track setup? Uh, yeah, so I had trials with them pre-2018 Worlds, and it wasn't until the summer after Commie Games that um, I was offered a spot in the programme. Yeah, because at the time I was still at uni, um, I, it was quite a tough decision for me because I thought I didn't really rate myself that much, um, sort of thinking, like, is, is this actually quite a big risk? Because if I go and join this program and then, like, a year down the line, you know, I've lost my place at uni and and now not in the cycling program either. Like, I'm going to be left without anything here. So I kind of just jumped for it and took that leap of faith and um, went for the, the, the GB squad. And, uh, yeah, I kind of haven't looked back since, really. So what's it like being part of the program? Is everything really regulated? Yeah, I mean, it's quite well structured. Um, GB do that very well. Um, we have, um, yeah, we have a lot of, uh, GB are in a fortunate position to have a lot of staff. So you get a lot of support with nutrition. You can have, um, you know, your training programs done. And um, we just have to focus on doing the things right for us, being athletes, you know, training right getting the right rest and um yeah making sure that we're doing things properly like in that way so yeah you get a lot of support i'd say probably more so than other nations like we're quite lucky in that sense what's been your standout moments on the track so far uh it's got to be commie games individual pursuit when i got the gold that was amazing and when i look back now maybe the world champs team pursuit winning worlds um 
I didn't quite understand or like see the whole situation as it was back then. Like, cause I was so sort of new to it, I guess. Thinking back now, winning world champs is absolutely massive and so is a Commonwealth gold. So yeah, those are the highlights and hopefully more to come. How would you make the transition to road cycling after Tokyo? Yeah, so um, after the after Tokyo, normally um, the endurance squad get get a bit of freedom to go on the road for a year afterwards. Our training now is not too far away from what a a normal road rider would do anyway. Um, the only difference is we'll we'll get a bit more freedom. Hopefully, I'll just get myself into the races, start racing with the continental team canyon dhb soaring just crack on with it from there and try and pick up some results really but you know it's it's the road is it's a different beast compared to the track um so there's no givens and i just like to give it a go to see where see where i can take it to and see how far i can get with it really what kind of races would you go for do you like hilly or cobbled races yeah so I mean, I do like I did like riding hills, but um, I'm never really going to be a climber. I'm I'm 193 centimeters tall, and you know, 80 north of 83 kilos, so I'm never going to be a climber. But I love racing in Holland and Belgium and stuff. Um, those sort of races races tend to suit me. You know, like hard, windy races. I quite I quite like those sort of things. Um, so yeah, I I love racing those sort of classic style races. Um. And that's the way I'd try and go towards if I was to focus on the road. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I kind of like. Who was your cycling idol when growing up? Huh. Um, I didn't really have an idol. Uh, I used to. I always used to watch um, Lance Armstrong videos, though. <laughs> like he was just insane, and like obviously you know why now, but just seeing him at the time, um, you know, just like whacking it up, like. One of the one of these climbs like Mont Von Two, just fully out of the saddle, just lit, uh, was just yeah. Like at the time, I was thinking like hey, this guy's crazy, like he's so strong, and I'd try and go out training afterwards and try and replicate it and just not go anywhere near that. Um, but obviously, it's it's pretty obvious obvious why now. But yeah, I'd say probably Lance Armstrong, I guess. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't, I wasn't really that much of a fan of cycling when I was younger. I didn't really get that much into it. I just enjoyed doing it to be honest. As you mentioned before, your older brother Harry is a pro. What's it been like? Did you did you two compete against each other when growing up? And do you use his success as a motivation? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, uh, when we were younger, we never really we never really raced each other because he was always the category above, so I never got the chance. Um, but we have raced each other a few times in the senior ranks. I mean, it was always he's always a good uh, good bit of motivation for me because he's you know he's two years older, so I was always trying to chase him and like try and be as good or better than him at what he was doing um so in that sense it's helped a lot and um you kind of learn from his mistakes before you've made them yourself so you you have that sort of advantage um which is good for me um but yeah harry's yeah harry's done really well as well so so last question what's the main goal we know the olympics but is there any immediate 2020 goal in your mind if they open up for racing yeah um looking at the back end of the year if there is any racing road racing i'd like to give it a go because um it's still 15 months until the olympics so um that's a goal for me doing some road racing if there's any on um european champs as well if that runs obviously it's up in the air um and then going into 2021 it's it's all about the olympics so the sole focus really and then after that in long term try and go on the road and see what I can do there. All right. Thanks very much for that, Charlie. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. That's it for this lockdown interview. If you missed any of our other interviews, make sure to check them out. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.